was to the fifth division of song. We've got to gear our minds to think on the level that God wants us to think on. No matter what you're asking for, no matter what you want, God will grant it to you. But you've got to be ready for the blessing by living a life. And then God shows his favor upon you. You cannot escape prosperity. Whether you like it or not, if you don't want prosperity, it doesn't matter. God's going to still prosper you. If God says, I'm going to prosper you, prosperity will come. The Bible says, whom I bless, no man can damn, and whom I damn, no man can bless. Amen. Did you hear that? Amen. Number three, under the same type, marital direction. If you have been considered barren and God decides to favor you suddenly, those who have been laughing against you will begin to laugh with you. <laughs> That's found in 1 Samuel First chapter, 9 to 21. Now, when you read Proverbs 18, 22, the Bible says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor from God. That's the problem of the day. These idiots, these men are idiots when they have a beautiful, blessed woman in their life and they treat them like trash. I mean, I've seen, you know, it, it tickles me because I've seen dudes have the most beautiful wife, beautiful spirit. Bend over backwards to be a blessing to you, and what they go, they go out and get some trash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they connect with somebody there who's totally opposite of what the wife is. And then when they get sick later in life, the first thing they want to do, they want the wife to take care of. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. They better be glad I'm not a woman. <laughs> <laughs> because Angela Bassett wouldn't have nothing on me. I'd get him in a bathtub and dunk his head so that he'd think that he was, he was dying from a baptism in the bathtub. <laughs> it says that whoso found a wife found a good thing. That's favor from God. When a man finds a wife that is beautiful and, and, and as she takes care of things, you found a beautiful thing. Why would you throw that away? I'm glad that he didn't realize he had a diamond in his hand. <laughs> because when I was going through the trash, I found that diamond. And man, I'm so glad I called her my blessing from God. Praise but that's what every man would, needs, to, needs to realize. He needs to realize that when God blesses you with a beautiful wife, you Praise need God. to stay connected. You need to communicate. If you don't know how, then why don't you just relax and just listen to what your wife got to say? Most men, you know, I was looking at this comedian, and he said that he was sitting here, just sat down, got all his little snacks around him, and cut on the TV so he could look at the football game, and in comes his wife, and inside of his, his head, he wouldn't say it out in front of her, but inside his, his head, he said, man, why is she bothering me? But out of his mouth, he said, what is it, honey? But he doesn't realize that's his blessing. Look. Today we have all kind of recorders that you can play. You can uh, record all the games you want, all the TV shows you want. But even, uh, Angel, tell you, when she comes in the room, I mute everything. I'll mute the TV and or either you know put it on, on um, um, pause so that I can talk to her, or either just record. But you have to you have to make the changes. You can't look for the woman to make the change. You're the leader in the house, and so you have to show love if you want to get love back from her. Why are there so many affairs today? Because women feel like they're being neglected. They're feeling hurt. I mean, you can see it all on TV, even TV shows like Dr. Field. The women are being hurt. And it's because men are not taking their role responsibly. Amen. We have to pray for them. Yes. If you have no husband, you'll get a husband. If you have no wife, you'll get a wife. If you're barren and you don't have children, guess what? God will bless you with children. Amen. Sometimes we get them and we do, why in the world did I pray that prayer? <laughs> but God will bless you in that area. Now, number four under that same direction is mental direction. Mental direction. When God decides to favor you mentally, suddenly you, be, you begin to have wisdom that you cannot explain. You know, Daniel 2 and 20 through 22 tells us that wisdom belongs to God and he gives wisdom to the wise. See, God just don't give it to anybody. Because most people get it and mess it all up. But God gives it to the person that's wise. If anybody lacks wisdom, God said you should, 
the word says that you should ask of God. That's found in James. You will find that when God decides to give you favor mentally, he has a wisdom. He himself, that person will have a wisdom that he cannot explain. I've seen people who could not read, men who could not read, and once they gave God their life and began to go to church, guess what? Even in their old age, they begin to read like somebody who, who has read all their life. How does that happen? It's favor from God. And number five, ministry direction. For those of you who are in ministry or thinking about going into ministry, everyone who is born again, baptized by the Holy Spirit, is a minister of God. All you need is favor from God. So even if you don't carry the title of pastor or minister or anything like that, guess what? Everybody is called to do what God wills us to do. What does God will us to do? It's found in Matthew, the 28th chapter, the Great Commission. God commands all of us. He doesn't ask. God don't sit around saying, Valerie, I wish you would go out there and just, I wish you would just ask somebody and tell somebody about me. No, it's a command. It says, Anthony, go out there and, and tell people about Jesus Christ. That's a command. All of us have to do that. And so, uh, God is not, <laughs> he is not sitting back waiting for you, uh, going to wait for you to do that. If you don't do it, then he'll give it to somebody else. And then that, the favor will be taken off you and will be placed upon somebody else. When a minister finds favor with God, it becomes easy for him to do the work of God. Saints, I can tell you from personal experience, by my being a pastor for, uh, well, now 12 years, and for even before that, from, from ministering on radio, for ministering uh, um, uh, under my pastor, Dr. William S. Hampton, I can tell you this, um, that it is easy to do the work of God. Yes, you'll have long hours where you study. You'll have a lot of time that you put in trying to get people to understand what you're trying to convey from the Word of God. But for the most part, it becomes easy. Whereas it used to take me uh, 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 um, a whole week to put together a sermon, I can put together a sermon in three days. But it, And sometimes, yeah, sometimes less than that because it's a funny thing. God will give you what you need. When I'm working on one sermon, God is giving me an idea for another sermon. So I have to hurry up and jot that down so that I can come back to that later. But he does it to me all the time, so it becomes easy. It becomes easy for me to talk to people. I was a very shy person coming up, I was a, especially with women. I was very, very shy. But God has given me strength and favor to be able to talk to anybody. I don't care if they're old. I don't care if they're young. I don't care if they're uh, military. I don't care if they come on the wrong side of the tracks, the right side of the tracks. I don't care if they're highly established in the, in the, in the uh, uh, community or down at the bottom. I, talk, I can talk to anybody, and I thank God for it because it's his favor on me that helps me to be able to do that. But when you find favor with God, any door you knock on will open. I believe it. And he said, well, Pastor, I've been talking to my loved one, and they haven't gotten it together yet. Give it time. Be patient. And watch God do his thing. God is going to do it. Just, just, be, just be patient. Just don't worry about it. And watch God do his work. Amen. Number six under that same group is manifold direction. Manifold direction, favor, is all Round favor. That means in everything that we do, God places favor on us. When we study about the man called Joseph, he had all round favor. He was never sick until he died. He had medical favor. He never was sick. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine that. That, that have a life where you're never sick. I was a sickly person growing up. I was a sickly person. Most of them still got kind of places now that I'm asking God to touch me in. But this man never had that. If you read Genesis, the 45th chapter, verses 4 through 13, Joseph said, God has made me Lord of all of Egypt. And he sent a message to his father. He said, come, Father, with all your family, and I will feed the rest of you for life. That's favor from God. But see, God can look further down the road than any of us can. Amen. You know how far we can see? This is only how far we can see. <laughs> Tip of your nose. 
But God can see way down. So God had it so that when Joseph, when the right time, Joseph would be placed over Egypt as taking care of all the food stuffs. And so he tells his family, come on, I'll feed you. What about mental faith? If we read, okay, if we read Genesis, the 41st chapter, 39th verse, Joseph was referred to by Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, there is none as wise as you, Joseph. There is none as wise as you. Joseph found favor with God. He had a mental capacity that was extraordinary. And what about marriage? If you read Genesis 48 chapter 8 through 20 verses, you will discover that the home of Joseph, there was peace and there was harmony. Can you imagine that? Not having to get up in the morning and worry about somebody with a bad attitude today. <laughs> and people say, well, I got up on the wrong side of bed. No, you got up on the right side of bed. You just got a bad attitude. Just, <laughs> just admit it. <laughs> what, about, what about that? Joseph had harmony in his home. Everybody that was in his home, came to his home, was at peace with each other. He had two sons. Every, everything anybody could want in a home was there. He didn't even have to look for a wife. One was given to him. He had favor. But what about materially? As far as he as was concerned, everything Joseph touched prospered. Everything. Genesis 39, 21 through 23. Everything Joseph touched prospered, even in prison. When they put him in prison, very soon he became the man in charge. Can you imagine that? They put you in prison, and they make you the man in charge over the other prison. It sounds like an oxymoron, but, but it, it's the truth, what God will do. Amen. Okay, now we're going to look at number three. The destruction of divine favor. The destruction of divine favor. If we go through the Bible, we, we uh, uh, will, what, what's, what some people say is uh, attracted to the favor of God upon their lives. And what others did that separated them from the favor of God. The following factors will destroy the favor of God. So if you got favor now, do the right thing because your favor can be taken off you. Amen. This is how. Number one. Disobedience to God. Number one thing that, that, that God hates is disobedience to him. When he tells you to do something, and if we look at it in today's church, you know, it, it really is odd to me. Because every time I go um, to Hampton every Sunday, um, I look at this church who's um, renting space from another church, um, and I look at how many people are in that church. They got so many cars that fill up that church's parking lot that they have to park over at Kroger and the bank in order to have a parking space. And yet, when you go to the pastor's website, he's talking total opposite of what God wants us to be. God said in, Le uh, I believe it's Leviticus, don't scar your body, don't paint your body, don't do those things to your body. We are not to place tattoos on our body, but here's a pastor where everybody's coming to. He says, I got tattoos and I can't wait for the next one. So is he studying? I don't believe so. Or is he studying and disregarding God's word? Because there's a lot of preachers that say, you don't have to waste time with the Old Testament. The Old Testament is very important to us because it always points to Jesus. Huh? So disobedience. But in the churches that are honest and true, you got people who say, well, you know, I ain't got to go to church today. You sick? Need a vacation? Just don't want to go to church. I ain't got to go to the Bible study. Well, the Bible says, feel not there's something yourselves together. Now, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do all that. So you, oh, so you have superseded God in his thought, what he commands us. So what you're telling God is, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to be involved with other people. I don't have to help in the community. I don't have to do these things because I'm better than God. I know more than God. And we know that's a lie. And that's what gets people in trouble. Then they go and get on their knees and like, Lord, I want you to bless me with this. <laughs> God, you're the only one that can do it. Lord, I just thank you for your blessing. 
Uh, somebody wrote on Facebook, God, that if I just typed amen, that you would bless us. I did that, so I'm ready for your blessing. <laughs> Disobedience will get you in bad in a bad place with God. Saul enjoyed the favor of God, didn't he? He was the first king of Israel. God didn't want to make him king, but the people kept saying, look, everybody else got a king. We need a king too. That's just like saying, everybody else is on opioids. I want to be on opioids too. God said, I'm your king. I'll take care of you. Haven't I always taken care of you? Yeah, 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 you did all that, but we want a physical king. And so God gave him Saul. And what does Saul do? He was selected as first king of Israel, but through disobedience, he lost favor with God. You can find that in 1 Samuel 15 chapter. Then after that, right under that, which the Bible explicitly talks about from Genesis through Revelation, is sexual sin. Perfect example, Samson. He lost the favor of God due to his immoral lifestyle. All kinds of sexual sins and immoral lifestyle will make a man lose the favor of God. And it's not only him. There's plenty of others in the Bible. Amen. David. I mean, he's with Bathsheba. God, he already had a concubine. Huh? It was hundreds of women that he could have chose from. Hundreds. And yet he chose a married woman. And what does God say through his prophet? The prophet said, David, God told me to tell you this. You did not have to bother with a person that was already married. I know that you have a concubine, but God said, I would have given you more women. But to mess with a married woman, now you lost favor with God. You can find that about Samson in Judges, the 16th chapter. Then there's pride. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. It's about 90% of today's church full of pride. Well, I thank God that I'm able to put in three pews in here. The stained glass windows, my family, we put that in here. So what? So what? Are you talking about feeding 25, Pastor? I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I was able to do 50 or 100 or 200 people. But you got pride, dude. Don't you know what happened to Lucifer? Because of his pride, he was kicked out of heaven and thrown to this filthy earth because of his pride. Pride will quickly take the favor off of you from God. God will give you grace, and he says to the humble, but will resist a proud person. That's scripture. Naaman almost losing the favor of his selective miracle due to pride, but was able to retain it when he humbled himself. It wasn't until Naaman humbled himself. We like to talk about how he went down seven times, but he went down the seven times because he stopped having pride. At first, he wouldn't do it. Me getting that filthy water? I'm not getting that's nasty. Don't you know I got OCD? But when he got off his pride... He, was, he went down seven times, and the Bible said his skin became like that of a young boy. See, when we get off our pride, you know, it's just like Christians who try to hide the fact that they're Christians with the world. Now, around the saints, oh, man, they shout the town down. But when it comes to being with the world, they cuss like them. They talk like them. They're negative like them. And God wants us to choose this day whom you will serve. Just like I said last week. The Bible wants us to choose. We have to choose. Choose this day who you will serve. And Joshua said, and as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Make up your mind. That's what you want to do. Now, under that, we got stinginess, lack of giving. Those that know how to give are always abounding in the favor of God. Both the widow of Zarephath and the Shumanite woman received divine favor because they gave sacrificially. God said he will open the windows of heaven upon those who are faithful in their tithes and offerings. That's found in Malachi 3rd chapter. Then there's lack of faithfulness in the service of God. If a man is faithful in the service of God, he will enjoy divine favor. Noah was faithful. And his family 
was preserved. They found favor with God. So what did God do? God took the whole family, put them in a boat, locked them up, and the people on the outside, they, didn't, they weren't scared about the first day of rain. But I guarantee you, when the second week is continued to still rain, and the water is up to their wasteland, they begin to scream and cry and howl. But the doors won't be open. The same as the doors would not be open when Jesus returns and redeems us, those who are in, in sin and disobedient God to God will find themselves in hell. And then the Bible doesn't say it's just going to end with hell. It says it's going to be placed in the lake of fire and everything in it will be burned up. Everything and everybody. So, lack of faithfulness in the service of God. Then there's sowing the seed of wickedness. The door of favor shall be shut closed against anyone sowing the seed of wickedness against others. A man will reap what he sows. Adonabezek has been cutting the fingers and toes of kings without mercy until it happened to him one day. You see, what you dish out is coming back. That's found in, if you want to look at it, Judges, the first chapter. But that, that's what's going to happen to you. Whatever you dish out is coming back to you. So if you got a lot of anger, guess what? A lot of anger is going to come back, back to you. If you, got, if you don't want to help people, guess what? Then you won't get help. Amen. If you're looking to hurt people, then you won't get it. You know, you're going to get hurt. This man cut off the fingers of all of the enemies that he, or persons that he considered was an enemy. And then here we find in the 57th verse of Judges, the first chapter, we find that this man's own fingers were cut off. Then here's a big one. I call it prayerlessness. Prayer remains the most effective keys that unlocks the door of favor. When Esther prayed, she found favor before the king. Likewise, Nehemiah prayed and, and received favor. In prayer, we can lay hold of God's promises and his words, and the door of favor shall be open unto us all. Now, in conclusion, God's favor can bring a lot of blessings upon a man. Divine favor can, number one, produce supernatural promotion and increase. Supernatural promotion and increase. It can, number two, bring restoration of everything the enemy has taken from you. You hear preachers say it all the time. Just, we, we're going to get back what the devil took. Well, you can only get it back if you're standing upright and be obedient to God and God puts his favor on you. You're going to get it back. But if you're still halfway, one got one foot in the church and one other foot in the world, God is not going to do it. Amen. Did you hear me? And number three, bring honor in the midst of adversaries. God ain't going to let your, your, your enemies overcome you. That's his promise. He's not going to let, let your enemy uh, continue to berate you and put you down and hurt you. God is not going to do that. God will give you a way of escape or he himself will divinely come, come forth and send his army that will destroy your enemies. That's his promise. And number four. Produce increased assets. God will give you what you ask. The, Jesus himself said, you have what you ask. But you have to pray, believing first of all that God is going to answer the prayer and then thanking him right from that moment on that he's giving you what you've asked for. Amen. You can't let a day go by. Well, you know, some people do. They let a day go by, a week go by, a month go by, and then they remember, oh, I'm in a destitute position. I better start praying. No, pray all along and thank God. Thank God all along. You ain't got to get on your knees to thank God. Amen. If you want to get on your knees all the time and pray, that's up to you. But when you thank God, you can be walking down the street. You can be in your car. You can say, Lord, I thank you for today. Amen. I thank you for how you bless me. I thank you for opening doors, oh Lord. Yeah. I thank you for shutting doors because some doors need to be shut. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for new friends. You say you give me new friends. I thank you, Lord, for getting rid of some of the people in my life because some people in your life are not there. For a good purpose. Amen. But you can have, and you do have, divine favor with God. Amen. You do. So, I ask you right now to give God. No, I want to say this before I leave. Don't be like the ducks. They continue to waddle around everywhere. When they have wings. When the cold come in, a duck will get up and fly to Florida, where, you know, where it's warm. 
God wants you to fly. The only way you can fly is to hear and take it in your heart and then use it to your benefit. Remember, me as a pastor and many other pastors out there, we're not up here just because we think it's cute to stand behind a podium. We're here to help you grow and to be blessed and to get your blessing from God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So give God a hand clap of praise. That's it.